procrastination. I haven't had this trouble for a while, but I got up this morning feeling just a little bit meh and sat around for most of the morning thinking meh. Now, you know that I'm motivated by the swimming challenge that I'm currently doing and it is an online challenge and I was sitting top of the table at the end of yesterday, but everybody in the group knows that I'm an amputee and the people that are sitting close on my tail are all male and if I was one of them I'd be like I'm not letting some one-legged chick beat me so I know that I am the hunted. So some of these people are in Europe and US and also some places and Australia and some in New Zealand and so that means that the end of the day is at a different time for everyone which means when I go to bed at night, I can go to bed at night the leader and get up this morning and Garmin ha gives me this nice, useful update. Ah, So-and-so has pushed you off the top spot. Well, that's just great. Thanks, Garmin. Equally, at the end of the day, for me, it says, you better watch out. Other people have logged activities today. And it makes you open it up and go, oh. So this is how the thing works. Now... Every time I go for a swim, I oh well, I always wear my Garmin and I wear it like a watch and it's got a watch face on it. And I always walk, wear it all the time and I wear it when I go swimming and it counts the lengths for me. It's one that does the swim lengths. So it counts how many times over. I tell it how long the, the swimming pool is and it counts my lap, laps for me, which is really bloody helpful because counting laps is such a boring task. Uh, anyway. So you can't usually fiddle it and the challenge will automatically update with the relevant type of exercise. So it automatically adds your swimming into this challenge every time you go swimming. Now, last night when I went to sleep, I was in the lead by a couple of thousand meters, I think, and I knew that I would have to go swimming today. Uh, yesterday, I didn't go swimming because I decided that I needed a rest. And if I'm going to keep knocking out these 4K swims, I'm going to have to do it after a rest day. I can't swim every day. Like I've said before, I have to have a rest day. So I had a rest day knowing that my ass might be caught and I might have to go to the pool today. That's exactly what happened. So I got up this morning and I've lost the lead. So I've got somebody that's a, a kilometer ahead of me and two people that are a kilometer behind me. So, uh, now I'm quite motivated, but I knew I needed to do a 4K swim. Now I had a lot of activity going on when I did the 4K swim the other day. I had the swim club turn up. I had to change ends. I had the family of fully dressed people floating around getting on my nerves. So I had a lot of things going on that kept me motivated and interested. Today, I didn't. So how do you tackle a great big task when you're feeling just a little bit about it. Well, you break it down. Now, I remember reading in a book by Chrissy Wellington, and uh, she was a uh, pro athlete, triathlete, uh, uh, res retired a few years ago. She was unbeaten when she was a pro and she held the Ironman world record for a while. And she wrote an autobiography. And in it, she said that she always ran her marathons like four lots of 10K. Now, if you think about it, a marathon, 42 kilometers, like, why would you do that? You just get in a car and drive. That's 26 miles. Well, four lots of 10K sounds a lot more manageable. And this is how I tackle the swim. I have my watch set to tell me by a vibration when I've done 400 meters. And I break everything down into blocks of 400 meters. I decided when I got in, I was just going to see how it went and have no expectations of myself. I did 800 meters felt fine, 1200 meters felt fine, 1600 meters felt fine, 2000 meters felt fine. And I kept on going each time the 400 um, clicked by, I kept on going, I have a bottle at the end and I do allow myself one brief rest at some point and normally my nose clip starts to hurt after a while. Um, anyway, I got to 3K, 3000 meters and I decided to have a stop and a rest and adjust the nose clip and take a drink briefly before carrying on. That way I got easily, well, not easily because I'll tell you what, the th last three or 400 meters, my arms were, uh, 
that way I got e I got relatively easily to the 4,000 meters, which is 160 lengths, which takes me just over an hour and a half. Now, if you get in and you think I've got to swim for an hour and a half and do 160 lengths, you're just going to be like, oh, there's no way I can do that. And it's the same with any type of a goal or task that you've got to do you've got to break it down into tiny little steps and this is what i did and that's how i got to four kilometers updated the watch and i'm back on top spot now i'm only back on top spot by three thousand meters and it only takes second place to go swimming once and i've lost the lead again but it's the way that it's it keeping me motivated to go swimming and it's keeping me motivated to do the long distances because there is no goddamn way that I would have done 4K otherwise if I, know, not, if I was not in this challenge and there was not someone chasing my ass and I did not want to try and beat all these people. The other thing I was thinking when I was swimming along is competing against able-bodied athletes versus competing against disabled athletes. Now, a lot of people um, in the MPT groups that I'm in have talked about this and all compete in para sports, sitting volleyball, that sort of thing, adaptive sports. But actually, I haven't even considered that. I have decided to go back in right where I left off. Now, I don't know if that's a wise idea or not. And my first event is an able-bodied event. Now, I don't give two hoots where I come and I'm categorized according to um, gender and age. And there's probably nobody else that's an amputee in the group. So do I compete in able-bodied events? Do I compete in para events? Do I do both? Like, for example, if I was going to do Challenge Wanaka next year as the aquabike, like I was meant to do this year, and I ended up having to pull out, there is an aquabike able-bodied and there's an aquabike para-athlete class. Hmm. Now, it'd be quite interesting actually to do both because I actually don't automatically consider myself as disabled unless I'm faced with something that's just impossible to do unless I tell someone that I'm disabled. Like certain sizes of cars when I catch a taxi, for example. So I'm going to have to have some thought about that because I don't know whether I want to continue in the able-bodied mindset or whether I need to do an adjustment or whether I need to sit in both camps. What do you think about that?